Take away, take away, strip your soul bare. Take away everything, God is still there. Take away, take away, strip your soul bare. Take away everything, God is still there. Give it up, let it go, cast off your history, fall into mystery, God is still there. Take away, take away, strip your soul bare, take away, take away, God is still there. still there. Give it up, let it go, cast off your history, fall into mystery, God is still there. Take away, take away, strip your soul bare, take away everything, God is still there. Take away, take away, strip your soul bare. Take away everything, God is still there. Give it up, let it go, cast off your history. Fall into mystery, God is still there. Take away, take away, strip your soul bare. Take away everything, God is still there. Good morning, church. This is Pastor Tracy, and we are standing outside of First United Methodist Church of Pittsburgh, this glorious place that we have come and we have gathered and we are worshiping, whether it be from your kitchen table or your living room couch. Find your pew and sit down and get ready and let you know there's some exciting things that are happening inside of our building. And that's why we're outside right now, because God is doing great things. Hey, I invite you to join along in the chat room that's beside the worship window today. Ask a question, introduce yourself, and say hi to a friend, and perhaps you even have a prayer request that you need to pray for. Any way that we can stay connected to you is more important than what you can say in the chat room. Glad you're here. I am grateful that we are able to worship God together this day. Amen and amen. At one moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will pluck up and break down and destroy it. But if that nation concerning which I have spoken turns from its evil, I will change my mind about the disaster that I intended to bring on it. And at another moment I may declare concerning a nation or a kingdom that I will build it and plant it. But if it does evil in my sight, not listening to my voice, then I will change my mind about the good that I had intended to do to it. Now, therefore, say to the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Thus says the Lord, Look, I am a potter shaping evil against you and devising a plan against you. Turn now, all of you, from your evil way and amend your ways and your doings. In likeness with the creator and lover of life, who yearns for the flourishing of all, we are unsettled. Upset. Grief-stricken. Incensed. The preciousness of life is treated with contempt. Daily, we weep over evil's reign. For every sibling, kin, and stranger, neglected or exploited. 
God, let your righteous fury move us to respond. Accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and live. Teach us, O Lord, your lessons as in our daily life. We struggle to be human and search for hope and faith. Teach us to care for people, for all, not just for some. To love them as we find them or as they may become. Let your acceptance change us so that we may be moved in living situations to do the truth in love, to practice your acceptance until we know by heart the table of forgiveness and laughter's healing heart. Lord, for today's encounters with all who are in need, who hunger for acceptance, for righteousness and bread, we need new eyes for seeing, new hands for holding on. Renew us with your Spirit, Lord, free us, make us one. Good morning, kids. Welcome to family time. I'm so glad that you're here today. Let's start with our prayer of gratitude. Lord, thank you for all that we are given. Lord, thank you for all that we are given. Especially the love in the hearts of many. Especially for the love of hearts of many. For sun, moon, stars, and sky. For sun, moon, stars, and sky. For family, friends, and fun for family, friends, and fun. And most of all, and most of all, for the, for the opportunity, for the opportunity, to help others, to help others. Amen. Amen. So this is Sunday number four of Lent, that season in the church year when we are preparing to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus on Easter. And when we reflect on what it means to follow Jesus in the pattern of dying and rising, of dying to our old ways of being in the world, our ways of selfishness and meanness and violence, and rising to new ways that God has for us. And so we've been talking about all these symbols of Lent. We talked about ashes and palms. We talked about the color purple and about incense. And today I want to talk to you about a new symbol that you definitely know, but maybe you don't think of as connected to Lent. And that is the pretzel. Did you know that the pretzel was a Lenten food first? That's because in Lent, for many, many years, the church has practiced something called fasting. Fasting is when you don't eat for a whole day or part of a day or maybe even longer, or in some cases, you give up certain foods. So for a long time in the church, people gave up things like meat and dairy products and eggs. And pretzels are a kind of bread that can be made with just flour and water and oil, no eggs, no milk. And so it was a great Lenten food that people could eat. And so people started to make them in the shape 
of someone folding their arms in prayer. Isn't that cool? Maybe you're more used to seeing a pretzel like this. So when we think about fasting as part of Lent, it can be, it can mean giving up food for a period of time to help to remind you um, of people in the world who don't have food or don't know where their next meal is coming from, to help you feel and empathize with them, and maybe to help you think about what you can do to help contribute to that problem. But it doesn't have to be giving up food. Fasting is about thinking about what it means for us to live in a way that is self-sacrificial. So maybe you're in a place where somebody needs a seat, somebody who's a little older than you, or maybe is having trouble getting around, or maybe they just look tired and you're sitting down and you can give up your seat to give them a place to sit. Or maybe you have a friend who's upset and just really needs someone to talk to and maybe that wasn't your plan for the day, you had something else fun to do, but you can give up your time to sit with your friend and to hear what they have to say. So Lent is about this practice of sacrificing the things that we want or desire in order to be in service to the world. It's the practice that we do in following Jesus, who gave his own life for us, so that we could have life with God together. Okay, bye for now. This morning we are going to continue our exploration into the notion that our prayers encompass our whole bodies. I invite you into a practice called gazing, or directing our attention at something in order to explore it in a deeper way. Often we try to connect with God within the trappings of our own language. To appreciate our ever-loving and ever-present God is an important part of our journey, and engaging our sense of awe and wonder is a way to bring up feelings of pure gratitude and an openness to love that really transforms and affects the world. This morning, we will consider our hands. If for any reason you find that uncomfortable or you'd like to gaze upon a different uh, part of your body, maybe your arm or whatever suits you, uh, all is okay, all is acceptable. Uh, but for me, I'm going to use my hand because it's comfortable. So find a position where you can get comfortable and maybe one where you could look at your hand for an extended period of time. So let's try it together. Let us pray. Consider what your hands have done today, just today. The sensations you felt, the strength you needed, perhaps the pain you experienced. Have you ever looked closer? Really look. The miraculous complexity of just your hand, just one small part of you, yet a whole landscape to explore. What do you see? Look closer, this time with your mind's eye. Within your hand, vast rivers of ever-flowing life. The waters of life journeying thousands of miles through you to arrive here only to flow on and on, always in motion, never still. Can you feel that? Deeper still, foundations of the shape of you, eloquently balanced to function just the way you do. Deeper even still, what is solid seems not so anymore. Unfathomable, 
combinations of building blocks, connecting, disconnecting, shaping, molding, loving. What are you imagining? Onward and inward. Basics. All things broken down until you see in your mind's eye the truth. Motion. Light. A flurry of activity. Circling. Connecting. God's motion. Ever constant within you. Imperceivable and yet inescapable. You not only hold the entire universe within every part of you, but God made sure that you are made of that stuff. The stuff of faith. The stuff of creation. The stuff of love. God's gift. It has been given to you freely and joyously. Can all of that motion, all of that light, all of that love find a way to form a thought? Perhaps that thought is, thank you. O oh God, let us take the time to consider our bodies and all of their beautiful complexity and diversity as a way of thanking you for this great gift of existence. Amen. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed." But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. I invite you to pray with me, please. Most holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Sunday that we find ourselves worshiping in Lent. We pray, Lord that all that we have to offer from our hearts and from our minds, from all of our experiences and all the reason that we have, we pray, Lord, that it would be acceptable in your sight. We pray, Lord, that what we offer, that we br what we bring, would give you praise and glory and honor you. Now, most gracious God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of my heart be acceptable this day. Amen and amen. It is Lent 4. And just when we think we're getting out of the ruins, we find that there are more ruins to discover. 
and that life is walking and breathing and ministering and helping and serving in the ruins. But from the ruins comes life, new life, life that is reborn and regiven. And every now and then, when we're walking in the ruins, there's a marker, there's something that stops us and causes us to turn back an anniversary, shall we say. And today, this Sunday, marks the year when we last gathered in this sanctuary, where we uh, prayed over the psalms that were offered for the day, and we sang together and prayed together for the last time in worship, never dreaming, never dreaming that our steps would lead here to a year later, not being able to gather face to face just yet. You know, and sometimes it's when we have those, those sacred markers in our life, those anniversaries, when we ca- it causes us to stop and to turn around and to look at what's behind us, what has happened. It is so very tempting to go back to find those pieces that are whole and that are perhaps a little bit shiny and, and easy to grab hold onto because we know what they are and it's normal. And we want that and we run back and we pick it up and we bring it to where we are in our journey. Such is the life of the potter and the craft of the potter who continues in opening in us to to further perfect us by trimming down that what is not needed. The story of the scriptures that we have today is from John 3, some of the most well-known, most overused, most abused scripture and words that we have given to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How many bumper stickers have you seen with this? How many tattoos have you seen with John 3, 16? How many times in a parade or at a football game or at a basketball game or at a baseball game do you see John 3, 16? And most of us know what it says. Oh, and it is so easy to run to something that is so embedded into the life of church structure. And John 3, 16 is just one of those verses. So this day, I ask us to to hear this verse anew, to open our hearts, to find out what in that verse is no longer of any value to us, and to bring on to and perfect what is needed to be taken forward in our journey. Whoever believes in Jesus You know, that word believe is a hard word because we have in our society, in our world, contained it to be an absolute, that you believe in Jesus or you don't. If you believe in Jesus, you're saved. If you don't, then you're not saved. What an outrageous absolute that God never put on us. How dare we make an absolute out of something where God has offered more grace and more opening and more love than we could ever imagine. When you take those words down and break those down, the word believe into the the Greek, um, it actually means something quite different in translation. In translation, it means to have faith. Now, believe and faith, belief and faith, they are not the same thing. For faith is not an absolute that we can throw upon somebody else. We believe that God is in the dark. We believe that God is the dark. But there's still a a, a nagging question in the back of many of our minds that, Well, God's supposed to be in the dark. 
And that's where it will be. And I'll tell people that because that's my, my belief. But when we have faith that God is in the dark, that God is the dark, that means we have been in the dark and we have experienced with our own lives, that we have felt with our own hearts and our own minds that God is real in the dark. We have faith because we know from our experience and not just some intellectual statement. So to have faith. You know, there are some Old Testament writings from the prophets that lead us to this too. They don't say that the proud and the wicked are known for for their belief. They say the righteous, the righteous live by their faith. They don't live by their beliefs. They live by their faith because to have faith is to set our hearts upon that of Jesus. Not to set our words and our absolutes upon Jesus, but to set our hearts on Jesus. So I invite you. I invite you to read over or to sing John 3, 16, as you know, and pray and and wonder and be hopeful about having faith in Christ, to set your heart on Christ and to live by faith when we feel the Master's hands trimming us so that we are perfected in our life, when we are walking through the ruins and we are able to resist that temptation to take just what was normal and take it as it is, and we accept the challenge to open up to more. So yes, God loves the world so much, so much. And anyone, anyone who has faith who has faith, will never receive eternal punishment. Anyone for all the world and all of creation will receive eternal life because of Christ Jesus. It's Lent week four. It has been a year since we have hugged one another and said goodbye to one another from this place. Let us hold on to the word of God so that we may bravely, with hope, have faith that God is bringing us through and that God will continue to bring us through. And there will come a great day when we celebrate together the faithfulness of God and how we have faith because that God is faithful. In the name of the one who made us, the one who sustains us, and the one who empowers us. Peace and amen. Though we face difficult truths and realities, we do so in the company of God and one another. Together we can hold what must be held. Together we can support those who need it most. Together we can tend life even in the midst of death. God is with us. Let us share what we have. Beloved one, you multiply all that we bring in love. As we remember those struggling with lack today, lack of connection, lack of rest, lack of resources, or lack of hope, We remember you can turn even the smallest offerings into an abundance of hope. Make us generous in spirit as we seek to center the needs of our most vulnerable neighbors. Amen. I've heard me mention several different times during this worship service that this is a year anniversary of us coming together and gathering and having, saying goodbye uh, to one another for the time being. A lot of us didn't know that it was gonna be a year later that we would still be talking to one another through virtual worship. And so 
I close with the same blessing that we did a year ago, but I've also added a new beginning. May you have the hindsight to know where you've been, the foresight to know where you're going, and the insight to know where, when you're going too far. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of their hand. Amen and amen.